How many times did you personally witness him be violent towards women? Uh, around four or five times. Was that all with Cassie or was it Cassie and other women? I seen him with Cassie and I seen him with Kim Porter, his uh, kid's mother. There have also been allegations involving him and other men in terms of abuse. It's been times that I would stand by the elevator or I would go downstairs and say, why is this guy rushing me out? And I would see different men. I've never seen what they did, but I've actually stood there while they knocked on the hotel room door. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please hit the like and please smash that subscribe button. You hear me? Smash it like you've never smashed. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> listen. So I wanted to do a summary of the interview that Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Roger Bonds, did with Piers Morgan. It was a great interview, and I just wanted to pretty much summarize what he said in one video, you know, because it was great. It was great. Piers Morgan asked a lot of great questions. He was straight to the point, which I love. So, yeah, I wanted to pretty much break down everything he said, everything that Roger Bond said. Okay, so here we go. He said the video did not surprise him. He saw many things back in 2012. He said Diddy has a God syndrome. He said the hotel gave Cassie a copy of the footage. Also, he said it was stated in the in the lawsuit i don't remember saying that i don't know but he said the hotel gave cassie a copy of the footage according to the lawsuit but okay he said diddy is not sorry he's sorry that he got caught he personally witnessed diddy be violent towards kim and cassie four or five times a lot of wrestling and punching matches he said he would understand if he you know if diddy had an issue with one woman but when you have a problem with every woman that you deal with you're the problem that's what he said he said he seen diddy grab kim up smack kim rough her up kim got to the point where she fought back she realized how powerful she was one incident on Sunset Boulevard, Roger saw the car rocking back and forth. The car was shaking, guys. My gosh. So the car was shaking. So Roger opened the door and asked Diddy, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You see where we at? What are you doing? And Kim got out the car like nothing happened and she fixed her hair. And she said to Diddy, I want to see you explain to the media that scratch I'm going to put across your face if you put your hands on me again. She realized that what he had to explain meant more to him than anything. She realized she had that power. He would have to explain why he's all bumped up and then he didn't want that. Kim got to the point where she fought back mm. because she realized how powerful she was. It was one incident on Sunset Boulevard in front of the Beverly Hills Hotel where I just seen the car rocking back and forth. You know, of course he put everybody out the car, but I seen the car shaking, so I opened the door. I said, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? You see where we at and what are you doing? And Kim got out the car like nothing happened and she fixed her hair. And she told him, she said, I want to see you explain to the media that scratch I'm going to put across your face if you put your hands on me again. Wow. Well, the lawsuit stated in January 2009, Diddy learned Cassie had spoken to another music manager and became angry. He grabbed her and left the party in the car. He beat Cassie, pushing in the, pushing her in the corner of the car and stomping on her face. The lawsuit said Roger tried to stop the beating, but he was unable to de-escalate the situation. But when Pierce asked Roger about that part, Roger corrected and said, no, he did stop it. He said he did stop it. He was able to stop it because he's the one who stopped it. He said it was in front of a black tire fair on Sunset Boulevard. Cassie was talking to the music manager and Roger was standing right there. Diddy came out and went crazy. Roger grabbed him and said, yo, what are you doing? What did she do? Cassie ran to the side of the car and bent down. And Diddy took off from Roger and he commenced to hit in Cassie. 
So Roger pulled Diddy off of Cassie and threw Diddy in the car. And then Roger grabbed Cassie and threw Cassie in the car. They continued to fight in the car for about two blocks. Two blocks they were fighting. That is crazy. Then Diddy sat there and then he shook his head and told Roger to take him back home. Take him home. Once he got home, he then had his assistant get a hotel room at the London Hotel. Diddy did that. They took her over to the London Hotel for one week. Roger's job was to go um, to go check on her, so he went every day to check on Cassie. She showed him some bruises on her chest and showed him her black eye. My gosh. Pierce asked Roger Bonds about the drugs, and Roger Bonds said he definitely witnessed a lot of drugs. It was a regular thing with them, with, you know, Diddy and Cassie. He had no idea that Diddy was forcing her because it was their thing. They would party a lot. They'd go to the hotel for the weekends. They'd do the freak-offs. He believed the freak-offs was, was happening on the regular. When Pierce asked, do you believe when she said that she was a completely unwilling participant in that and he was manipulating the whole thing? Roger said Diddy is a king manipulator. He can manipulate anything and anyone. Money and power is what he's all about. He had conversations with Diddy throughout the years. Diddy has a God syndrome. Yeah, we know that. They all do. They all have God syndromes. He believed Cassie was 19, so she was seeking fame and wanting to be a singer. She allowed herself to be manipulated and be taken advantage of. Pierce asked, what kind of person is Diddy? Roger Bond said, Diddy is a very arrogant person. We know that. He's a no-nonsense person. If he wants it, he feels like he can get it. If he wants it, he feels like he can pay for it. If he wants it, you can't tell him no. Roger said if he if the beatdowns happen no I'm sorry he said if the beatdowns happen on his watch he'd get on between it but he felt powerless because he couldn't get in between it if he wasn't around him and Cassie had conversations him and Kim had conversations he said to, uh, Kim told him Bonds I got four of them I allowed these things to happen as far as him messing around with girls and stuff like that. When I get tired of it, he's going to know. That's what Kim told Roger Bonds. Roger Bonds said he would give Cassie advice. It got to the point where it's like you're talking to your daughter. He said he would give her advice, but Cassie was so scared that she would go back and tell Diddy. Do you hear this? Cassie would go back and tell Diddy everything that Roger said. That would make Roger not want to talk to her or give her advice or tell her what she should do because Cassie would go back and tell Diddy when she'd get high or when they were alone. Next thing you know, Diddy would call Bonds over the speaker and tell him to come to his room. Like, come to my room. Come to my room. And then he'll ask Roger, why are you talking to my girl? Why are you talking to my girl? Wow. When people ask, why did Roger Bond stay? Bond said that he was also manipulated by Diddy. Diddy would also apologize to him. He would say, yo, I don't know what's wrong with me. It's not going to happen again. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do better. Yeah, they always do that. They, they are liars. They are liars. The truth is not in them. So, okay, anyway, so... So things would be going all right for the next couple of weeks. Then all of a sudden, Diddy would blow up again over something. Like if she didn't want to go out or if she didn't want to do something, he would totally lose it. He would lose it and go crazy and start, you know, beating on her. Bonds said he and Diddy would have conversations and Bonds would ask him, yo, why? What's wrong? He would get to the point where he would act like he was mad at you about it, so you would stop talking about it. He had ways to tell you, okay, enough is enough. Do not get in my business. Don't get in my business. It made Bonds feel helpless, but at the same time, if he stayed, he felt like he could help. But if he leave, no one was going to help Cassie. Everyone would turn a, a blind eye to it. That's one of the reasons why he stayed. 
Pierce asked, was Diddy keeping tapes of celebrities in his home when they were taking drugs or having SEX to, you know, later use against him? Bond said he didn't see evidence of that in 2012, but Diddy did keep a video bag with him or his assistant kept a video bag with him. From what's being revealed now, Bond said he believed that video bag had tapes of what he and Cassie was doing. He always had a video bag with him. At the time, it was a camcorder and Diddy always kept videotapes and cassette tapes there with him. Diddy always had a videotape bag with him. Do you think the feds got a hold of that? Ooh. Okay, so Pierce asked about the allegations involving Diddy and other men in terms of abuse and so on. Bond said when Diddy would do those type of things, Diddy would give the bodyguards a day off. He would go to the hotel and say, yo, I'm going to stay in the hotel for the weekend. Yeah, take the weekend off. They can take the weekend off. And Diddy would rush him out. <laughs> Bond said him being the person that he is, there were times he would stand by the elevator or go downstairs and wonder why was Diddy rushing him out and why is Diddy rushing? He said he would see different men. He never saw what they did, but he would stand there while different men would knock on the hotel room door and went inside. But he doesn't know what went on behind the closed doors. Pierce asked, when was the last time Bonds talked to Diddy? Bonds said last time he talked to Diddy was the day before Cassie dropped her lawsuit. The conversation was about Bonds' son who's in trouble in Africa and Bonds asked for some help. Diddy said he doesn't have it right now. He's going through something, but he may need Bonds' help. Bonds said he didn't know he was added in the lawsuit. So when Diddy told him he may need his help, he didn't know what he was talking about. He thought it was about the Diageo liquor brand that Diddy was suing. He thought maybe Diddy settled with Diageo and needed help pushing vodka or the tequila. So it's until the next morning, he got a whole bunch of messages, DMs, telling him he's in Cassie's lawsuit. And he was like, for what? Then he read the lawsuit and he realized that's what Diddy needed help with. Diddy probably wanted him as one of his witnesses and say they had a regular relationship. It was just a normal thing. He said sometimes in some days they had a great relationship, but it was this dark side of him he was trying to hide and he wanted him to say it didn't exist. He wanted him to say it did not exist. But Bond said he couldn't lie and say it did not exist when it did exist. Pierce asked if this is the, the beginning of the end of Diddy. Bond said that it's hard to count him out and say it's the end because people are so forgiving. I know, right? Bond said he feels like other people are going to come forward. He said the incidents he witnessed was in 2012. And this hotel incident that just leaked was in 2016. That means from the year he was there... 2012 and all the way to this incident in 2016 that means between 2012 and all the way until she left in 2018 she was getting those beatings and she was as a matter of fact cassie started dating diddy in 2007 and this thing happened that bonds was explaining 2012 so other things happened before bonds you know became a bodyguard so okay so pierce asked do you think diddy belongs in prison bond said no he don't think diddy belong in prison he said diddy needs help Rehabilit rehabilitation is a start in admitting that he needs help and stop covering it up saying that this was the only incident he got to be real with himself and admitting that this is a pattern of what he's been doing all his life and now he needs help now i do not agree with that the last part diddy needs jail time yes he does diddy allegedly he killed a lot of people so you don't think he deserved to freaking go to jail for all these abuse. This is not the only thing. Diddy 
been beating people up since the late eighties. Okay, and he embroiled a lot of people allegedly, and it's all gonna come out. Misa Hilton, his first baby mother, was getting beat. It's so bad that she had to run and hide underneath a car to get away from Diddy from the beatings. So don't tell me this loser needs rehabilitation and help. He can get all that in jail where he belongs. Okay, get out of here, Roger Bonds. Okay, you guys, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> So that was your summary of the interview with Pierce Morgan and Diddy's ex bodyguard Roger Bonds. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, please smash the subscribe button, and share this video. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.